together. Day one of the 11th unit. Today's January 29th. Solving separable differential equations. Okay, I guess the good news is um, all of the skills that we use today, you you know, and there aren't any new derivative rules to learn. So we're going to apply a couple different things that we already know, or supposed to know, and use them to solve separable differential equations. All right, the solution to any differential equation is a function. So your answers today aren't going to be 3 or 12. They're going to be some function. Uh, the solution to this differential equation, so this is like a very generic looking one. Um, wait, let's, when we say separable, let's just back up a minute. What we're separating is the x's and y's. And we're going to separate the x's and y's. And we're going to do something that's a little bit fishy. It looks fine. But it's a little fishy, but because it looks fine, it's what we're supposed to do. Like Most people don't even worry about it. And that is we can like disconnect that dx from the dy. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. Again, dy dx is not really a fraction, but we kind of treat it like one. <coughs> and now we've separated the y stuff and the x stuff. And then we can integrate both sides. Let's see, there's an invisible 1 there if you want there to be. So the antiderivative of 1 dy, what would that be? Who has the derivative of 1? Well, be careful, x or y, but since we're talking about y's, let's make it y. And then on the right-hand side, what's the antiderivative of the derivative of f? just f of x. So the antiderivative of the derivative cancels each other out. And then we have a plus c on there. So all our answers will look uh, something like that. Um, this is called the general solution because, because of the plus c. Like we don't have a, as opposed to a particular solution. So general solution has the plus C on there. If they give us some information um, called an initial condition, like they give us a point usually, we can figure out what C is, and that gives us a particular solution. Um, it'll be pretty clear which one we want, because if we want particular, it'll give you a point that you plug in to figure out what C is. Okay, a little side note here. There is an entire college course devoted to solving differential equations. It's called differential equations. <coughs> In fact, if you're headed toward anything STEM related, you do Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and then you do differential equations, or diff EQ, if you've had siblings take it maybe. Uh, and after that comes PDE, partial differential equations. And yeah, those get crazy. So today, we're going to, or in this course, we're only going to solve the separable ones, the ones where we can separate x and y. Um, I hesitate to even write this because this is a little misleading, but we're doing the easy ones from differential equations. That doesn't mean they're the easier ones, I guess. Relative to the other ones, we're going to do ones that are straightforward. A separable differential equation can be written in the form f of y dy equals f of x dx. So what that means is some function of y times dy equals some function of x dx. And then we integrate both sides, and we're good to go from there. To solve a separable differential equation, separate the variables, then integrate both sides. In fact, the mantra or the saying is 
separate, then integrate. You've got to separate first. And by the way, on multiple or on uh, pre-response questions on the AP test, you almost always get one point for just separating the variables. So like that's just an algebra point. So even if you don't know how to integrate and you're, it's a weird, wacky equation, if you can algebra your way to get x's on one side and y's on the other, you earn a point. All right, let's do an example here. Solve that different differential equation given this point is on the graph of the function. So even before I start, I know this point is going to help me find C. So I'm kind of working from the backwards back in first here. I'll need to separate. I'll need to integrate. When I integrate, I get a plus C. And then this point will come in, and I can use that to find, figure out what C is. OK, I need all my Y stuff on one side and all my X stuff on the other side. Um, so let's subtract the x squared over. So negative x squared. And then let's multiply both sides by dx to move it to the other side. 3y <coughs> dy equals negative x squared dx. That's our separate step. One point out of three or four, however many points this question is. Got them separated. Next, we'll integrate both sides. So let's pick on some people here. Total confidence in Joe and Leo here. Joe, how about the antiderivative of 3y dy? 3y squared over 2. Good. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. 3y squared over 2. By the way, you could put the plus c on either side or both sides, but usually we put it on the side with x because we know we're eventually solving for y. So hold off on the plus c till we get to the other side. Leo, speaking of the other side, how about the antiderivative of negative x squared? Negative x squared over 3. Very nice. And then here's where we'll have the plus c. Separate, integrate. Uh, let's see. I think I want to clean this up a little bit. Let's multiply by by two thirds. I'll get y squared by itself. And on the other side, I'll have negative two ninths x cubed. And then here comes a little bit of a trick that bothers some people and some people like it. We have not solved for C yet. C can be anything right now because we haven't figured out what, what C is using that point. So C is anything we want it to be. If I multiply 2 thirds by anything, it's still kind of just anything. So that looks a little funny. Those C's are not the same. any constant. And so if we multiply by 2 thirds, it's still just another constant. Now that, that bugs some people enough that they start putting subscripts on their c's. Because come on, 2 thirds times c isn't c. If it, if it really bugs you, you can put a subscript on one of them to sort of indicate maybe to yourself more than anything, hey, those are not the same. But it doesn't matter yet because we haven't solved for c. When we plug this point in, it'll be really important. But for now, we can just roll with that. All right, well, let's use this point now. So 4 goes in for y. <coughs> 0 goes in for x. That's convenient. That's nice when they do that for us.
So C equals 16. So Y squared equals negative 2 ninths X cubed plus 16. trouble is we're not quite done yet because the solution to a differential equation is supposed to be a function. That's not a function, right? Y squared means it's going to have some kind of uh, symmetry and it's going to, it's not going to pass the vertical line test. Like this is not, I need to solve for Y. So let's solve for Y, which means we put a square root on the other side, but with the square root comes the plus or minus.